What is up, Christ Built family? I hope you're doing really well. I hope God is blessing you today. And yeah, just all together, I hope you're doing really incredible. For those of you who are new here, we get started and usually start mm, right around in about five minutes or so. Uh, super excited everybody's here. This is our, uh, we've been doing Bible study for uh, quite a long time, several years. Uh, but this is our first Bible study on the new Christ Built page. So we're going to get started here in about five minutes. We usually have a group of 30 or 40 or so that come and hang out. Um, but being that we are doing it on the new page, uh, we may have a little bit smaller of a group. I have no idea. But regardless, hey, God's going to bless it no matter what. So anyways, hope you're doing really well. And uh, we're going to get started here in about five minutes. I imagine we'll have somebody some folks joining here real soon anyways i hope that uh the weather is good where you live i am uh i'm here in north louisiana they had some pretty incredible pretty crazy pretty terrible storms actually um down in uh, south louisiana as you've probably been here no matter what part of the world you are um and you've probably been hearing about the uh, uh hurricane ida which was uh uh, was a category four turned into a category five uh, hurricane and uh, a lot of damage done but you know what um, God is good regardless and uh, even through our toughest storms and toughest trials he is right there willing and ready to help us out if we are willing to be helped so anyways for those of you who are new here really excited you're joining us like I said usually we have a group of 30 or 40 so uh, but we usually do Bible study on my personal Facebook page, um, which is Jeremiah Beeson. Uh, but we swapped over here to, uh, to try this on the new Christ Built Apparel page. So hopefully everybody got the message. Hope everybody's going to tune in. And um, yeah, so anyways, we're going to get started here in maybe two, three minutes, somewhere along those lines. Uh, not really sure what kind of crowd we're going to bring tonight because this is our first one on the new page. But uh, it doesn't matter because guess what? Whoever is here is meant to be here and meant to hear this message exactly how God wants them to hear it. So uh, tonight we're going to be talking about a couple of different topics. Um, we're going to be talking about uh, creation, uh, what exactly happened. We're going to go in-depth in creation as well. Uh, we're going to get into Adam and Eve. And a lot of people think that Adam and Eve is just this real quick story you go through, you know, and they messed up and it happened, you know. But the reality of it is, is there's a lot of technicals and there's a lot of crazy stuff that went on in the background when it pertains to Adam and Eve. So we're going to get started here in just a couple of minutes. Normally we give about five minutes um, until we start because, like I said, we have a group of like 30 or 40 people who... Uh, usually join on but like I said this is our first Bible study um, on this page so anyways I'm curious random question what is your favorite color go ahead and drop it in the comments go, go ahead and drop it in the comments what is your favorite color as you can tell what do you think mine is I got a blue pin I got a blue shirt it's definitely not red anyways just out of curiosity. And by the way, if you guys can hear me loud and clear, I need you to go put a thumbs up in the comments. Um, I need you to put something in the comments that says, hey, I can hear you loud and clear. That way, it's a little bit of feedback uh, on my end that you guys can, can hear what we're talking about. So um, tonight, we're going to get started here in about uh, maybe a minute, two minutes tops. Um, I know I keep repeating myself. That's because new people are continuing to hop on. Usually, we have 30 or 40 people. But this is our first Bible study on the new page. And go ahead and like the page, share the page. We've already had three, four thousand people like it. It's really awesome. Um, God has just continued to pour out blessings, just left and right. And we are actually dropping our first, uh, our brand new apparel line uh, coming uh, the very first part of October. I'm thinking right around October 1st. So super excited about that. By the way, also, if you have any prayer requests, any whatsoever, do not be afraid to put them in the comments because let me tell you something. We have a great group of people who will pray for you um, in the comments. So don't forget, if you have any prayer requests whatsoever, drop them in the comments and we will pray for you. I can't tell you how many people have been healed, how many miracles have happened just because somebody stepped out in faith and said, you know what, I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to let Satan throw this at me. I am going to um, walk after God with whatever I've got. And you know what, if it takes posting a comment and step out in faith and asking for prayer, then I'm going to do it. And it's that person who does that that's going to get their miracle because they're stepping out in faith. So let's go ahead and get started. If you would, the way that we usually start this out is uh, uh, we just, uh, if you guys could pray with me, because see the whole idea beyond the, the Christ book family that we've built is, is, it's, 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 it's about reaching others, but it's about deepening our walk, which is why you're here. I mean, nobody comes to a Bible study 
out of, well, some people come, come to a Bible study out of curiosity, but lots of people genuinely want to understand the Bible better and want to um, have a better grasp on what their faith entails. And that's kind of what this is. And, um, and, and, and we need to, you need to make sure that you're following along with me in the Bible. Because the thing is, is that I, I tell people all the time, I'm like, listen, don't trust me. Don't trust me. You know why? Because if you trust me, if you trust me, and rather than, uh, and don't go behind me and read what I'm reading and study what I'm studying and make sure that I'm telling it right, then you're not, you're not, I don't want you guys putting your faith in me. I want you putting your faith in God. So, Make sure, follow along in the Bible study, and, and, and as we go along with your own Bible, that way you can get the revelation, you can read, and you can study it, um, and, and that way you can have a good grasp on it. When I, say, I, when I say don't trust me, I'm not saying, well, I'm not an untrustworthy person. I'm just saying it's a scary thing to, 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 to put your faith into somebody else's hands. I can't tell you how many times, how many times I have asked people, why do you believe what you believe? And you know what their answer is? Nine times out of ten, they were raised in it. Their pastor taught them that, or, or you know, maybe they a friend mentioned to them, "Hey, all you got to do is believe." And the reality of it is, is, is that we have to read and we have to study the Bible to understand it uh, for ourselves. Because see, we don't want to get to heaven or get to that point where we, where, where God's like, "Okay, you're either going to make it or you're not," and He's going to look at us and if we don't, if we don't have a personal relationship with us and say. Well, depart from me, I never knew you. He's not going to say, depart from me, I never knew your pastor. And we're not going to be able to say, we're not going to be able to say, oh, well, they taught me wrong or, or, or oh, I didn't understand this. See, the Bible says that, that my people perish for lack of knowledge. And how do you gain more knowledge? You look into it yourself. So that's the whole goal here. I'm excited you guys are with me. Uh, we're going to go ahead and pray. We're going to get started. We're going to get started uh, right at the very uh, first part of Genesis. So y'all pray with me. Like I said, if you can hear me loud and clear, put a thumbs up in the comments. If you have a prayer request, drop that in the comments. Um, and don't forget to, to like this page, tag, share, all that mess. So like I said, usually we have 30 or 40, but this is our first Bible study on this page. So let's go ahead and pray. Lord, I pray you guide us and strengthen us, God. Thank you, Jesus. I rebuke about any spirit of infirmity, God. I rebuke about anything that's coming against us, Lord. I speak to each and every person, Lord, spirit, right now, God. And I pray that your fire would rest upon them, Lord, in Jesus' name. I pray that your mercy and grace would encapsulate each and every one of us, God. I pray your hand would continue to guide us in the right direction, Lord. I rebuke about that spirit of fear, God, that comes upon us whenever we try to step out on faith and Satan kind of pokes at us and says, Oh, well, you know, you probably shouldn't do that or eh, you, you might not do that. I pray that we would, we would look past that. And and look to you for our faith and not to stand on our own understanding, Lord. I thank you, God, for your mercy, your grace, and your love and everything you've given us, God. And I thank you for this Bible study group in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Let's get started. Let's get started. So, um, like I said, I want you guys to, if you got your Bibles, if you got your notebooks, go ahead and follow along with me. That way we can all be on the same page. Um, so, the Old Testament, the Old Testament is is built into basically four time periods. Okay, you have four time periods. Okay, um, one, and we're gonna go to we're gonna go over those time periods. The first one's gonna be innocence. Okay, um, the second is gonna be conscience. The third is gonna be the patriarchs, and the fourth is gonna be the law of the prophets. So if you were to um, kind of um, Break down the Old Testament in a nutshell. I'm going to go through these time spans. That way you can kind of get a chronological order of what we're talking about. So the, the time of innocence, okay, extends from the very point of creation of man, okay, you know, uh, 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 to, his, uh, to his sin in the Garden of Eden. So you have this period of time where God creates man, uh, creates woman. They're perfect. Uh, they have no problems, no issues, and then they sin. And so uh, that ends the time of innocence. Okay. Then you have the time of conscience. Uh, and now the, the reason why they call it the time of conscience because see what they were what they were told not to do is eat of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of uh, of good and evil. So that there were things open to their understanding that they weren't supposed to be. And therefore, they are they are in more of a conscious state of, of what sin is and, and, and things that are going on. Um, but that extends um, from uh, uh, the time of the fall of man, okay, the, the original sin, Adam and Eve, uh, to Abraham, okay? And then you have the patriarchs. And the time of the patriarchs um, reaches from Abraham all the way down to Moses, okay? 
And then you have the law of the prophets, okay? And the law of the prophets extends from Moses all the way up until Jesus. Um, so we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna talk about first creation to the first judgment. Okay, we're going to talk about from creation to the first judgment. So let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Okay? It says, In the beginning, God created heaven and earth. Okay, so what I want to point out here, real quick, okay? Um, it says, In the beginning, God. Okay? It does not say, In the beginning, the God and the angels. It does not say, In the beginning, the God, or in the beginning, God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus created the heaven and earth. No, it says, in the beginning, God, okay? That alludes to there is one God, not three. And we're going to kind of go into that a little bit deeper in the Bible study. But what I want to point in this is, is that God is not contested, okay? God is not, there, there's nobody that rivals God. God is the Alpha. God is the Omega. He is the beginning. He is the end. There is no other, no other next to God. It is just Him. In the beginning, God. Not in the beginning, Jesus, Holy Spirit, God. Um, and I want to point out too, if you flip to John chapter 1, okay, um, I, wa I want you guys to grasp this. If you flip to John chapter 1, um, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Okay, so it says that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So in the beginning was God. And then if you skip down to verse 14, and it says that, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So if in the beginning the Word was God, and, uh, and the Word, which is God, right, uh, was made flesh and dwelt among us. Okay? We're still talking about one linear person here. Okay? One linear. God robed himself in flesh, and became Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Um, but that's 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 that we're going to get in that to a later, in a later Bible study. But I'm going to put a nugget in there because you guys need to go and, and check that out. Uh, but on the very first day in Genesis one and three, uh, uh, God said, "Let there be light." And I am thankful for a God who answers prayers in a dark world. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but we are living in an interesting time right now where a lot of things are controversial and, and, and the Christian population seems like it's, it people, you know, the Christian population seems like it's decreasing and, and the, um, you know, the, the, the general consensus is, well, if you're a good person and if you're a happy person that you're good. Um, and, 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 and anyways, my point is in that it says, he said, let there be light. I am so thankful. I'm so thankful that God is our light in our darkness. And then it says, God divided light from darkness. See, light cannot coexist with darkness, right? Light cannot coexist with darkness. Um, that, I'm, I'm going to give you guys a story, and it's kind of going to be the theme of our Bible study um, throughout, throughout this whole entire deal. I'm going to give you guys a story. It's pretty good. So there were three men on a fence. That was three, not four. There were three men on a fence, okay? It was a beautiful fence, beautiful wall. It was called a wall, right? Beautiful wall. And on this wall, they were sitting there kind of talking. And, and on the left side of the wall, um, there's this beautiful green pasture. Jesus is walking up and down the pasture, hanging out, doing his thing. And on the right side of the wall, um, there, there, there's the world. There's the parties and the drinking and the smoking and the hanging out with the wrong people. And these, these three guys are sitting on this wall. Okay, they're sitting on this wall, and one of them is like, you know, this this kind of this walk with God thing. You know, I'm not really sure about it. It's not really for me right now. Um, you know, so I'm gonna kind of go over here and, and do my own thing. Which, by the way, I've been there. It brings you no happiness. All the money in the world, all the all the parties in the world, all the other stuff. It is not gonna make you happy. It doesn't. You end up empty and you end up always wanting something else to buy or wanting a new something or whatever. You end up empty no matter what. Um, so this guy goes over to the world side and he's out there hanging out. And, and you know, the one guy, um, the other guy says, you know, we have to kind of get off this wall sometime. And um, 
And he's like, okay, you know, I, I really want to commit my walk to God. I actually want to kind of start reading and I want to kind of start praying and, and maybe I kind of want to start studying on a daily basis. You know, I mean, hey, even five, 10 minutes a day, if you're just starting out is a great accomplishment because as you pray, as you read, the Lord will give you more of a hunger for that reading and praying. And all of a sudden you're reading and praying for, you know, 30 minutes, 45 minutes, an hour, a few weeks in, you're like, God, how did time pass? And the reason why is because you've emptied your flesh cup uh, and, 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 and allow God to pour in with his spirit. Like, give you an example. I've used this example tons of times. If, if we as people are coming to God as new Christians or just dormant Christians, those are folks that, that say that they're Christian, but they don't actually back it up with a lot of their actions. Uh, and by the way, that's not me condemning anybody. That's just me explaining a state in which a lot of people are in. So you have the average Christian, which their, their, their flesh cup is filled to about the top. So God doesn't see this line right here. So they give, they give, they give, they give a little bit of time on Wednesday and a little bit of time on Sunday to Jesus. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I didn't do that evenly. So, uh, but anyways, this is, this is what they do as far as the world is concerned. And, um, what happens is, is they always wonder why they're not getting revelation or why God's not working in their life or why God's not speaking. And the reality of it is because they've only given this much to work. They haven't given it much. But see, the more you study, the more we read, the more we reach after God is the more we start pouring out of ourselves to where all of a sudden, a week after we start praying, say 10 minutes a morning and reading 20 minutes a day or whatever, all of a sudden our line comes to about right here. And we notice that we want to continue to study um, and read more. And it's really a strange feeling. And, and But the thing is, we want to do it now. We didn't, it was a chore before. And then maybe a month in, maybe we're like right here. Maybe we're like, we're, we're getting pretty pretty sold out. You know, we're praying for an hour, reading for an hour. Um, and and we're, now we're starting to reach out to other people. And all of a sudden, when we really grasp a hold of what God has for us, we try to get way, 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 way down here where God is just pouring in nonstop. See, because when we pour out of our flesh, it gives the Lord an opportunity to pour in more of his spirit. And um, right now, his spirit is... Um, Gatorade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, zero sugar. That's kind of disappointing, isn't it? A zero sugar Gatorade. I accidentally picked up a zero sugar tea the other day and it was so disappointing. And I picked up a zero sugar Gatorade. I think it's God telling me, hey, cool it on the sugar. It's a zero sugar Gatorade. Who does that? Who makes, why do they even make that? Anyways, just know every sip out of here is disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> not really, not really, but kind of. Um, anyways, we like to have fun too, and I hope you enjoy it too. Um, you're going to get your fair share of dad jokes as well. Hope you enjoy those. If you don't, eh, you can frown with the other half of the world. Um, <laughs> anyways, so um, let there be light, Genesis 1 and 3. And this says, Then he divided the light from darkness, and he called the light day and the darkness night. That's Genesis chapter 1, verse 3 through 5. Um now I want to point out here, okay, at this form of creation, the, the, the world was still without form and it was void, okay? Um, basically, there kind of this existed a, a mass of waters, if you can imagine a, a floating ball of water. Um, and on the second day, uh, the God said, let the firmament in the midst of the waters, excuse me, let, uh, uh, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay, so who knows what firmament is? All right, I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds. If you know what firmament is, drop it in the comments. You got 10 seconds. I'm not timing you. Actually, I'm timing you. All right, here we go. What is it? Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. If you know what firmament is, drop it in the comments now. So firmament is atmosphere. Okay, that's what that is. So I'm going to read this again to you so you can understand it just a little bit better. It says, let there be an atmosphere in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. That's Genesis 1 and 6. And it says that God called the firmament heaven or today what we would call the, the for to our naked eye, right? We would call it the sky. But in the spiritual realm, right up there is heaven somewhere floating out there. Um, so yeah, today we call it the sky. Uh, and it says that the firmament divided the waters into those under it and to those above it. That's Genesis 1, chapter 6 through 8. On the third day, God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place and let dry land appear. That's Genesis 1 and 9. Now, obviously, he called the dry land what? Earth, right? He called the dry land earth. Well, now we have this ball that's got you know, ground and we got water and now we have earth just boop, 
you know, there it is. Um, and then it says that gathered the waters, uh, it says and the, basically the, the gathered waters are called seas, you know, to us in a nutshell. Um, and on the same day, God said, let the, uh, let the earth bring forth grass, grass, herb yielding seed and fruit yielding fruit after his kind. Okay, this is very interesting. Because God speaks here, and you notice over and over and over again, you'll notice over and over and over again, there is a linear um, uh, understanding that God wants us to get. And that is things breeding after its own kind, okay? After its own kind. So what we've got here is um, he's saying, hey, I don't want you to breed an apple tree with a banana tree. We don't need no... I guess that was a, a, a banapple. We don't need banapples, even though it would be really cool to have a banapple. We don't need banapples. Um, and also that flows over and, and, and that flows over into the creation of male and the creation of female. God is very clear when it comes after, when it, when it goes on to talk about that particular subject. But right now he's addressing animals. He's addressing um, fruit, you know, or not animals. He's addressing fruit and seeds and all of those things. He'll be addressing animals shortly. Um, that's Genesis 1.11. Uh, and, and so it says on the third day, basically you have the appearance of dry land um, and gathering on water specific areas. You have grass popping up, flowers popping up, all these little cool things. Who likes palm trees? Oh man, I love palm trees. Palm trees are my, one of my favorites. Um, anyways, on the fourth day, fourth day, what did God do on the fourth day? Fourth day, say, he said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night and from uh, let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years and let them be lights in the firmament of the heaven to give the light upon the earth. Genesis, that's Genesis chapter one, verse 14 through 15. Um, basically on this day in a nutshell, we're kind of encapsulate this. God made the sun, the moon, the stars. He divided the light from the darkness uh, to mark days and seasons and years and signs and all of those things, right? And you can find that in Genesis chapter one, verse 14 through 19. Fifth day, fifth day. Okay, here we go, fifth day. I want to know what your favorite animal is personally. All right, my favorite animal will probably surprise you. Okay, my favorite animals will probably. So you got 10 seconds in the comments, put your favorite animal. I mean, favorite animal all time. If you had one that you're like, you know what? I wish I had a pet. I don't care if I had to, uh, uh, I don't care if it's a whale and you had to put a 50 gallon tank in your backyard and say, look, this is my whale. Uh, you know, what is your favorite animal? Go ahead and drop in the comments, put your favorite animal in the comments because God created animals, right? Um, it says on the fifth day that the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life, the fowl that may fly above the earth, and the open open firmament of heaven, which says atmosphere. By his word, um, God spoke and created all the whales, every living creature that moves in the water, every winged fowl. God also said, be fruitful and multiply the earth. So uh, on the fifth day, like I said, God created the, the fish and the birds. Um, so everything that flops. Uh, anybody, got any, anybody got any fishermen out there? My little brother's a fisherman. Man, he is getting good, too. Anyways, I don't know what your favorite animals are. I don't know what you commented, but mine are penguins and turtles. I know that sounds so weird. I love penguins because they're absolutely hilarious how they walk. And and, and turtles, I don't know why I find turtles hilarious, but I like turtles. Um, anyways, <laughs> on the sixth day, God created the land animals and the humans, right? Us. On the sixth day, um, and by the way, if you... Uh, uh, having relationship troubles or anything like that or curious, you need to pay attention to this next little part because uh, we're about to get real deep as far as Adam and Eve is concerned. And there are going to be some life lessons that you guys are going to learn here in just a second if you receive it. Sixth day, um, God oversaw the creation of uh, land animals. Humans also. He said, let the earth bring forth every living creature after its kind, every cattle after its kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after its kind. Genesis 1 and 24. Uh, and this is really cool. I want to point this out because there's no time frame here in which um, it, it, it says like, it says, the Bible says like, uh, I believe it says that uh, a day in God's eyes is like a thousand years. So whenever it says that everything was created in seven days, 
I can take it literally and say, okay, everything was created uh, within with, within seven days. And personally, I I I I do I do um, uh, believe that. But there is also a theory called the gap theory, and the gap theory is this: there's no real time frame that after everything was created. Um, we don't, we're not really given a time frame between the creation and the fall of man. We don't know what that. I mean, we don't know what that time frame was. It could be millions of years that Adam and Eve hung out in the garden and just chill with God, and then, you know, so we don't really know. But anyways, at this particular time, we are on day number six, it, and I love this because he says, "Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let him have dominion over the fish of the sea and the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth." So basically, God created man in His own image. He both made, he made both male and he made both female. Um, and then he says, of course, what's his key line here? Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish and over the sea and over the fowl of the air, over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Because I have given you every uh, uh, every herb bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth, every tree, uh, yada, 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 yada. He, he says, I've given you all of these things. And what I want you to do is I want you to take care of it. And, you know, I, 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 I can tell you that in my walk with God, I have made my biggest mistakes whenever I didn't take care of what God had already shown me or what God had already given me. We need to make sure that the things that God shows us, we cherish, and the things that God gives us, we cherish because we can forget about them. We, we kind of set them to the side. All of a sudden, we're going back to old habits because we didn't really respect and, and cherish what God did for us in the past. So don't forget what God does for you. Um, and obviously on the seventh day of creation, God rested. That's Genesis chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. So you have creation was complete. God's relationship with mankind was just beginning. So let's go into Adam and Eve. I hope you guys are ready to jot some notes down because it's about to happen. Um, all right, so let's keep going. The second chapter of Genesis, um, it kind of kind of restates the creation of man, right? Create a man and woman. It gives more specific details on Adam and Eve. Um, so let's kind of, I'm going to give you a brief overview and then we're actually going to kind of go to it. Um, so the uh, uh, the gar God puts Adam and Eve in this garden, right? And our garden's a beautiful pray place. Um, and it says that it says that every every tree, every plant was good for food. And a river went out of the uh, uh, a river uh, went out of Eden into to, uh, to water the garden, which is kind of cool. Um, but uh, anyways, it says God put Adam with instructions for him to dress and keep the garden. Okay, so I want you to think about this real quick. Our spiritual life is very much very much tied to the first thing that God told Adam and Eve, right? Um, that is to dress and keep our garden, right? So imagine your own personal garden as your spirit, right? And what do you do whenever you keep a garden, right? You have to pluck the weeds out, right? You have to maintain the garden. You have to maintain the reading. You have to maintain the studying. You have to maintain those things that, that you need to maintain in order for your garden to flourish, in order for your spiritual walk to flourish, um, but that also means cutting some things out of your life that are hindering you from flourishing. Uh, also, what I want to, want to point out here too is, is that um, you may not believe it, but whenever we really have a walk with God, we will not only talk different, we won't, because we, I guarantee you guys, I am not the guy I used to be. Zero sugar Gatorade, not great. I'm not the guy I used to be. Um, you know, I didn't start my, my Christian walk until probably like eight or nine years ago. And I guarantee you, I was a prideful, arrogant, um, kind of a turd, you know, in a nutshell. And and whenever I started with my, with my walk with God, I, I took it seriously. I was like, okay, I definitely need to act differently. And I definitely need to talk differently because, my you know, my language wasn't the best either. Um, and, and, I, and I started to dress differently as well. And that's just some natural stuff that comes whenever you kind of step into that walk with God. Um, and what I point, what I want to mean by that is like, okay, Christ built apparel. You guys know that it's my heartbeat. That's been, that has been my heartbeat for years. I used to own a clothing company. Um, and a few years back, the Lord, actually 2015, Lord put on my heart, Hey, I want you to start a Christian clothing company because nine times out of 10, people are going to look at you and they're going to judge you by how you look before they, before they even, uh, uh, before you even open your mouth. I get nine times out of 10, you look at somebody, your judgments or your opinions about that person are right from what they look. So, and it's no different. See, we, we show what we care about first, lots of times by what we wear. 
give you an example. I'm in Louisiana, right? People love football here. A lot of you, I, I don't have a lot of time to watch anymore, but a lot of people love football um, or like football. So you'll see them wear um, LSU shirts, right? Right? They hold LSU deer. They care. They care about LSU. You know, they care about LSU. Um, or you'll have somebody have a, a rock concert. You know, they'll have a, their favorite rock band or their favorite rap band or whatever the case may be. But my point is, is, is I wanted to ask you something. I'm not going to tell you anything. I want you to ask you something. That that how can we, how can we dis, how can we distinctly show the world that we care about God if we look just like the world? You see what I'm saying? Like like to me, in my opinion, man. All I'm nine times out of ten, if I'm wearing something, it says something on it that says, "Man, Jesus loves you," or "Lion of the Tribe of Judah," or "God cares about you," or whatever. Not to boost myself, but but it's a sign. It's a sign that hey, I understand that a part of my Christian walk is reaching other people except for me. I, I mean, instead, uh, not except for me, other people, not just me. That the whole reason why Jesus came was to reach the entire world. And if we're, and once again, I'm not saying there's anything about bad about LSU shirts or your favorite jerseys or your favorite hats or your favorite whatevers. I'm just saying, why not mix it up sometime and wear something that's going to edify God? And maybe that person who just lost a loved one, who's walking through Walmart, who nobody knows the pain that they're going through, and they pass by you with a shirt that says, man, Jesus loves you. Or, or can I pray for you? And they take you up on that offer based off of your shirt. And you didn't say a thing to them. My point is, is that, is that whenever we really start walking with God, our whole life is going to change. Our appearance is going to change. Everything is going to change about us, right? That's because God, God does so much in our lives that we want to share it with other people. And one of my passions is wanting to share it with other people through clothing. Because like I said, guys, Christ Built Apparel, the reason why we called it Christ Built, besides the fact that I prayed about it and that's what God was like, hey, you're naming this company that, is because a Christian foundation, right, is built on not only prayer and fasting and walk with God, but also reaching others. That's why we do these Bible studies. Like we've been doing them for over a year or so. So anyways, our point of that is, is, is make sure you're dressing your garden. Anything that Satan throws at you that, that you know is not right or you kind of like a little sketched out about, you're like, eh, I don't know about this, you know. I, I don't know about going this direction. Make sure you dress your garden. Um, so, but I, I want to point this out because what happens is, is pretty terrible. What happens is, is pretty rough. Now, we all make mistakes. I understand that. But making mistakes over and over and over again is not an excuse to continue making mistakes. And, and what happens here is that is that God had other commandments for Adam as, as well and Eve besides just dress the garden and tend to it. Um, he wasn't left to his own will, right? There's one thing, one thing that the Lord told him not to do. He said, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but, 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 of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in that day thou shalt surely die. Okay, all right. So I want you to put right now, um, put Thanatos, put Thanatos, T H N T O S, in the comments. You got 10 seconds to do it. Thanatos in the comments. Sugar free Gatorade. What a joy. I really shouldn't be complaining. Should I? Ah, sugar free. It's such a disappointment, though. Why sugar free Gatorade? Thanatos. What does Thanatos mean? So, when you translate the word Thanatos, it means separation. Okay? It means separation. So, what happened here is, is I'm going to read it to you and what God was talking about. So, when you translate it into uh, uh, the Hebrew or the Greek, excuse me, uh, it says, of every tree of the garden, Thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Because in that day thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely be separated from me. So God wasn't saying, God wasn't saying, you're going to die, like I'm going to kill you on the spot 
if you eat of that tree, he's saying you're going to be separated from me. Because remember, sin has not been introduced. There's been no, it got, these people, these guys are just walking at him. And he were just walking with Jesus. It's a perfect time. They're fantastic. They're great. He says, just man, just don't eat of the tree. Don't eat of the tree. And um, yeah, he said, he said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, um, so in a nutshell, let's kind of, let's keep going. So right now, I, I kind of skipped ahead of myself. Right now, we just have Adam, okay? We have Adam. So the Lord created Adam, obviously, before Eve, okay? You have Adam, then you have Eve. And he noted that it was not good for a man to be alone. God said, I will make him a help meet for him. I want to point this out, and I want to get some amens to this. Um, <laughs> a lot of us treat our female counterparts as less, that's wrong. Um, that's very wrong. Uh, see, the Bible it goes into it, it, it goes into um, it, 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 and I will I will I will reiterate this and in going into this to a later Bible study. But it calls the female the weaker vessel. It does not mean that she is a weaker person or a lesser of an individual. When it says weaker vessel, it means that she is tapped into her emotions a little bit more than guys are. Guys have got like three or four main desires, right? And and women balance us out. But lots of times we can we can get big heads and male and female are supposed to work together. They're supposed to work together. Ultimately, yes. Ultimately, yes, there is an order in which the Lord created a household. But it does not mean you smother everything. It does not mean you smother everything in the form of, well, this is what the word says. And not oh gosh I am I need to get off on that but you understand what I'm saying we're supposed to work together um and like I said there is an order I understand it's God man woman I get that but a lot of us discount mm. anyways I'm gonna leave that one alone uh anyways it says the Lord created um, a helpmeet and that was Eve um. And who knows what Eve was created from? By the way, the words help meet, just FYI, uh, in Hebrew, Hebrew means aid. Okay, the word help meet means aid or helper. Um, so the Lord caused a deep sleep to come fall on Adam, and he took one of Adam's ribs. See, this this is this is really hard for me to believe. I'm just gonna be honest, this is gonna be a raw moment between you guys and I. The fact that he took a rib from Adam. It's kind of hard to believe because have you ever tried to take a rib from a man, especially with some good barbecue sauce? You ain't doing it. No, I'm just kidding. I was, it was a cheesy joke. I told you it was coming. You accepted it. If you laughed or chuckled, put a thumbs up. If you didn't think it was funny, like most of you probably didn't think it was funny, put a thumbs down. <laughs> I'm willing to accept it. Uh, anyways, so man was given free will, okay? Uh, and you're given free will. So that's the whole thing is you're given a choice. I'm given a choice to walk after God with everything that I have. And you're given a choice to walk with God after everything you've got. Um, there is right in the Bible and there is wrong in the Bible. A lot of us, we mess up and we classify somebody as a good person or feel like I'm a good person. Well, the issue with us classifying ourselves as a good person is, is that, that, that we hold ourselves to a moral standpoint in which we create. But see, God's version of a good person oftentimes is very different than what we create ourselves mentally as a good person. Um, so um, anyways, but you have the power, the choice of free will. And, and God, in Revelation 22 and 17, God's promises are to whoever so will. Which means that the, all the promises in the God, salva, uh, God uh, in the Bible, salvation, and all these other things, they're very, very, very um, available to each and every one of us. Doesn't matter if you're past. Doesn't matter if you're, you know, if you got bad history. Doesn't matter if you're in a bad spot right now. Every single one of those things are available to each and every one of us if we choose to follow after God's will. If we don't choose to follow after God's will, we just do our own things, and those things are not available to us. Um, and and kind of the, the major differences between mankind and like the animal kingdom. Right is the power of choice, the opportunity opportunity to consciously choose to do good or to do evil, um, and you know, yeah, I mean that's kind of what it comes down to. Um, so let's 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 keep on let's keep on going with this. So it's chapter three. This is the fall of man. Okay, 
um, this is where we're gonna this is where we're gonna learn some pretty 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 deep stuff. Um, uh, good old sugar free Gatorade. Exciting. Anyways, all right. So let's talk about the fall of man. Eve visits the forbidden tree. Okay. Um, one of the things that 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 is an issue here is that, like I said, God told Adam, "Don't do this. Don't eat of the tree." Eve knew the exact same. They both knew that they were supposed to do it. Let me just tell you something: that if you're the man of your house, and the Lord has, ooh, y'all need to hear this. Y'all need to hear this. And if you got a record button on your iPhone. You need to press record because this next statement right here is probably going to help you, whether it's now or whether it's later, whatever. The Lord spoke to them and said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If the Lord speaks to you or speaks to your wife not to do something, don't you think it would be a better idea rather than just resist it to cut it out of your life? Here's my point is that if Adam was really the man of God that he needed to be, in my opinion, if the Lord spoke to me and I'm Adam, hey, don't eat of that tree of the knowledge of good and evil, I'd have just went and cut it down. Because I wouldn't want any opportunity for my family to be in a bad situation because I made a choice to not cut the things out of my life that I needed to. It falls through, same thing with females. It falls through both sides, both sides. See, Romans, um, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they both knew that the tree should have been avoided altogether. Uh, they should have stayed away from it. Romans 13 and 14 commands, make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Um, Ephesians, uh, verse 4, verse 20, excuse me, chapter 4, verse 27, neither give place to the devil. Um yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it's kind of pretty straightforward. So Satan's pretty subtle, guys. Satan's pretty subtle. Satan's pretty sneaky. Satan's pretty subtle. Um, he was kind of waiting on the right opportunity to inject his two cents um, in the Garden of Eden. And here's where I want to go straight to. Um, here's where I want to go straight to the. Uh, um, here's where I want to go straight to the word uh, again. So if you guys could read this with me, that would be uh, fantastic. Um, and we're going to be in chapter 3, verse 1. Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Uh, once again, I want to point this out, that Adam and Eve were tempted even in their paradise state. So even in your walk with God, you're going to face trials. You're going to face tribulations. You're going to face things in your life that you're going to wonder, why in the world am I going through this? But I'm just going to sit here and tell you that if you trust God, you will make it through it. And if you do not trust God, then you're kind of on your own because God is going to back up those who really trust in him or who really reach out and ask for forgiveness or really start to repent and head in the right direction. It says, Now the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And then he said to the woman, All right, here we go. He said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Ooh, I want you guys to get this right now. Eve did not correctly, Eve did not correctly quote God here. And that's when the serpent knew he had her. Mm. What did God say? God said, don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But she said to the serpent, you should not eat of it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. See, oh my Lord. A lot of us, we want to resist temptation and we want God to deliver us from things, but we never read our word we never study, so we're, we're quoting God incorrectly, and we're never conquering anything because we're no different than Eve misquoting the word. Mm. See, if Eve would have quoted it correctly, mm, it would have shown that she had a closer walk with God. That she, then she, It would have shown, at least in my opinion, that she would have had a much closer walk with God. 
let's see when we misquote things and we're unsure of things when you know when whenever we hit temptation and we fall to it or we step in the wrong direction and we end up falling to it ultimately like i said the bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge um and anyways, it says, the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. You will not surely, Thanatos, be separated from me. For God knows that in that day you will be, um, God knows that in that day you will eat and your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Man, I don't know how many guys, oh my Lord, I don't know how many times I got to say this, but sin almost always looks good on the front end. To Eve, it looked, it, mm, Jesus the very next scripture says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate. Sin, your temptations, the boy or girl you've been sleeping, the man or woman you've been sleeping with you shouldn't be, the the, the man or woman you shouldn't be talking to, <coughs> the, uh, you know, the, the, the parties you've been attending, whatever the case may be, that looks good to the eyes, Right? Is going to get you in trouble. Temptation almost always looks good to the eyes, but on the back end of things, it sucks. What happens? It says that uh, uh, then she took up the fruit and ate, as she also gave it to her husband with her, and he ate. I want to point this out real quick. Adam knew darn well, just like Eve knew darn well, they were not supposed. They were not supposed to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay. Eve misquoted it. Eve maybe had a little bit of a lack of understanding, or just not as a close as walk with God which she should. But Adam, on the other hand, is a whole nother issue. Adam knew exactly what he was doing. Oh my Lord, mm, I hate even saying this. Adam chose the woman in his life over the will of God for his life. Adam chose the woman in his life over the will of God for his life. And it said, and he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked and they sewed big leaves together and made themselves coverings. Then they heard of the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. See, that's what happens is whenever we fall to temptation, what's the first thing we want to do? We want to run, we want to hide, and then we also want to play the blame game. We want to play the sympathy game too. And God's like, I mean, you know, we kind of reap what we sow in this situation. But at the same time, I want to show you something that's pretty incredible. And I want to kind of open your eyes to something because God's mercy and God's love and God's grace is shown all the way back in Genesis 3. And whenever he robed himself in flesh, came down as Jesus and died for our sins, that same mercy, that same love, and that same grace that was found all the way back and what I'm about to read to you now is available for each and every one of us. So what happened here? He said, he said, um, and I want to point this out that, that 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 God is Alpha and Omega. Remember, He is the beginning and the end. There is no others. There are, there, and it says, in the beginning was God. Okay, it wasn't in the beginning there was God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus, and the angels, and all this other mess, right? And then remember, John one and one. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word. Was uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was made. Uh, the Word was God, and you skip down to verse fourteen. It says, "And the Word was made flesh." Right now, if in the beginning the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh, that means God became flesh. He Himself robed Himself in flesh and became the sacrifice for our sins. And we're going to go into that in a different Bible study. But my point is, is that. It's, it's incredible. It says, They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. That's the first thing we want to do whenever we, we get in trouble is hide. And, it, and then the Lord God called to Adam and said, Where are you? And I want to point this out, that, that God knows everything. God knew exactly what they had done. So why in the world would God ask, Where are you? Why in the world would God ask that if he knew what happened already? He was giving them an opportunity to fess up. 
he was giving them an opportunity to say, man, I messed up. I take responsibility of it. I'm sorry. You know, he was giving them an opportunity because he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked and hid myself. That was Adam. And he said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree which I have commanded that you shall not eat? Should not eat? Then the man said, and this is, this is interesting right here because this is also whenever we get in trouble, what do we want to do? We want to hide and then when we get called out, we want to play the game, the blame game, right? And a lot of us, oh my Lord. Mm -mm -mm. Husband, will get, husband will get in an argument with a wife. Girlfriend will get in an argument with a boyfriend. Whatever. And what do we want to do? We always want to play the blame game. Um, and, it, and he said, to whom told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tray which I commanded you? You should not eat. And then Adam gets arrogant. Adam gets a little defensive and a little arrogant. I want, I want to read this to you. Verse 12, chapter 3, verse 12. Good old Adam has been walking with God for X amount of years, however much time. It says, then the man said, the woman who, this is him speaking to God, all right? The camera is God. The woman who you gave me, the woman who you gave me, <laughs> gave to be with me, she gave me in the tree and I ate. See, the funny part was is that Adam didn't mention that he was sitting there right next when the fruit was offered. No. He just said, no, nah, she gave me the fruit. Hmm. He got a little arrogant. And the Lord, and the Lord said to uh, uh, said to the woman, "What is this you have done?" The woman said, "The serpent deceived me, and I ate." Man, they just—they're both playing the blame game, and I take a responsibility. So what happens? The Lord God said to the serpent, "Because you have done this, you are cursed more than the cattle and every beast of the field. And your belly you shall go, and I shall eat the dust of your life all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman." And between your seed and their seed, and I shall bruise your head, he shall bruise your heel, yada, yada, yada. And then he goes into, uh, uh, to, it says to the woman, hey, I'm going to greatly uh, multiply your sorrows and birthing process. Um, and then uh, Adam, um, uh, Adam was, uh, I'll just read it to you. So he said to Adam, because you have heeded the voice of your wife, right? Heeded the voice of your wife, which means, hmm. God knew that he chose the woman in his life for what his wife wanted to do over the voice of God. You have eaten from the tree which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat. Cursed is the ground for your sake, and toil, and you shall eat of it in all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the herb of the field, and sweat on your face uh, uh, shall eat bread, and it goes on and on. And he's basically dealing out what ended up the punishment in a nutshell. Um, but I want to I want to tell you I want to tell you that that if you are in a situation that God where you have messed up and you think you are beyond repair you have been hurt so much and you think you're beyond repair or you um, maybe you're just seeking God you feel lost you are never too far from God for Him to be able to reach down and help you up never too far it may be painful you may have to get rid of some people in your life you have to make maybe get some rid of some bad habits you picked up along the way. But I can tell you that there's a way to turn your life around. I can tell you there's a way to turn your life around. Um, one of my favorite scriptures is is Acts two and thirty eight. If you want to if you want to flip there with me, Acts two and thirty eight, right after Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the New Testament. And what happens here to give you kind of a backstory is that um, uh, is that is that Peter has the understanding in which the Lord is taught. Everybody, and this is kind of if you want to get close to God, um, it's going to start out with these this particular process in a nutshell. And as you guys know, if you've if you spent any time with me along these Bible studies, you know that that we share God does ridiculous testimonies. I mean, all the time using using two thirty eight, which is one of my favorite scriptures. It's Acts two thirty eight, but that number two thirty eight pops up all the time when God wants to do something or maybe for me to pray for somebody or whatever. And you guys have seen the testimonies. It's been ridiculously incredible. And if you haven't, we've got a YouTube page. Um, it's I think it's Christ Built. And you can go in there and you can see a ridiculous amount of testimonies. Or you can go over to uh, my Facebook page, which is Jeremiah Beeson with two E's. Same thing. Ridiculous testimonies all the time of God doing crazy stuff with, with this with Acts 2.38. 
um, with that number 238. So it, it, no matter where you are in your walk with God, I'm going to tell you kind of the backstory here um, is that is that the the Jews just realized that they were the ones that crucified Jesus, right? They realized they were doing wrong. They realized they were they were um, they were uh, their, maybe their their mentality was a little messed up. Uh, maybe they've been following tradition a little bit more than they should have. You know, they were putting tradition in front of relationship, and Peter sets out to correct this. Okay. And they were asking, hey, what do we do? What do we need to do to be saved? You know, what do we need to do to correct um, our actions and, and really what we, what can we do, you know? And then Peter said to them, repent, which by the way, I want to point this out. Repentance is not just asking for forgiveness. It's not. Repentance is, um, is taking the action to stop doing the things that you know you shouldn't be doing. Um, repentance is more than just, oh God, forgive me for my sins. Thank you, God. Let me have a great night's sleep in Jesus' name. No. I mean, of course, that's asking for forgiveness, and that's a good thing, just in case you you know, weren't sure if you messed up that day. It's always good to die daily. The Bible says we need to repent, basically repent daily. Um, but repentance is turning away from sin. And he tells him, he says, listen, listen, cry out to God. Say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I messed up. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm really going to I'm really gonna do better. You know, and I'm not going to start tomorrow. I'm going to start tonight. You know, God, I, I pray you forgive me for the cigarettes I smoked or forgive me for the, the drinking or forgive me for the pornography addiction. Forgive me, forgive me for the greed or the pride or the gossiping or forgive me for being judgmental or, or being, you know, unforgiving. God, forgive me for all those things. And then genuinely, see, the Bible says forgive 70 times 7. Work on working that out of your life as quick as possible. And God can deliver miraculously too, but he's more apt to deliver whenever you're working towards him rather than just opening your mouth. See, it, it says, that, the Bible says that people honor me with my words, but their actions are far from me, right? And it's because everybody likes to talk, but nobody likes to back it up. And God's like, listen, there is salvation in somebody who's willing to just back up their own words. He says, listen, repent. He says, repent, which is turn away from sin. He says, let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Right? And that's another thing is, is this is a mandatory deal. We've got to repent. We've got to turn away from sin. Right? We've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Um, and, and it says you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Or Holy Spirit, whatever you want, to, you know, whatever you want to call it, um, and those are separate instances in themselves. And we'll, we'll go into Bible studies um, here in the future about those, about what is the Spirit of God, what is the Holy Spirit, you know, um, how do you get the Holy Spirit, you know, um, how are you supposed to be baptized? Is there a certain way I'm supposed to be baptized? And the answer to that is absolutely yes. Um, you've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus. And I can tell you here, very, you know, here, whenever we go through these Bible studies, you're going to, you're going to, uh, your, your knowledge and, and your understanding is going to be open beyond more than you've ever had before because you're really not only sticking to the Bible study, but inviting people to Bible study. And God's going to bless you with the knowledge and the understanding that you never had before because he's willing to bless you. He's willing to bless you. Oof, Jesus. God's God loves to bless a giver. I'm just telling you right now, you cannot give out, you cannot outgive your finances with God. You can't outgive your time with God. You cannot outgive God. And God's like, listen, listen. You start repenting. You still turn away from saying, I'm gonna help you out. Hey, you need to be baptized. You guys need to find a great church. You guys need to find a great church to go to. A lot of people say, Well, you don't have to go to church to be saved. Well, the Bible does it does say, don't forsake the assembly of, of, of those together. But I can tell you guys that, yes, we do an online Bible study here. And I love you guys. And we've been doing Bible study for years. By the way, I'm glad we had a, usually we have, I don't know, 20 to 40 or so. But I'm glad we had a pretty decent turnout tonight. Man, this is our first time on our Christ Build Apparel page. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, God wants the best for each and every one of us. And he's not just sitting back you know, with a laser gun, just, you know, shooting at you for every little thing that, you know, every little thing that you think you do wrong. If, if you have a heart that's genuinely like, okay, I messed up, I'm going to do better, but it's not, I messed up, I'm going to do better. And then 10, 10 years down the road, you're like, well, I'm messing up and I'm going to do better, but we're not really trying to do better. See, God wants us to, to have a changed lifestyle because ultimately God wants us to be free. I mean, don't you want to be free from the addiction that you struggle with or free from that 
unforgiveness or free from like because whenever you're freed for something, it's a weight off your shoulders. And the Bible doesn't. Bible says lay aside every sin and weight. Doesn't have to be a sin to hold you back. So, anyways, um, that is where we are going to stop tonight's Bible study. Um, Guys, like I said before, if you have any prayer requests whatsoever, we have a great group of people here who will pray for you. Um, we've seen plenty of miracles. I mean, just slap out crazy miracles happen on Bible study. Um, we've got people that post stuff in the comments that we pray for, that we'll get messages later that, hey, man, you know, we prayed and God healed me. Like just a couple of weeks back, it was just bonkers. We had a Bible study. And uh, at the end, whenever we we're praying, like we're about to do here in a minute, the Lord gave me a vision of this girl who was, it was just frustrated and and kind of miserable. Um, but she was looking in the mirror, and and her hair was falling out. She was touching her hair, and her hair was falling out, and she was worried. And the Lord spoke to me, and and gave me this vision, and I said it out loud. I said I'm having a vision of this, this girl. She's looking in the mirror right now. She's wor she's got some hair coming out of her hair. She got she got a some sort of something she's dealing with where her hair's falling out. You know, it's a disease or something. And, and the Lord wants to let you know that he's going to take care of you. And in the comments, within 10 seconds, this girl posted, that's me, literally, right now. I just set my phone down. And it's in front of the mirror, and I was looking at my hair, worrying about it because I've got, and then whatever the disease was, and my hair falls out. And I'm telling you guys, God is a uh, uh, responding to these prayer requests and actually praying for one another, right? Guys, my prayers are, 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 are uh, your prayers are just as good, right? My uh, God wants all of us to have an individual relationship and God wants us all to pray with each other. So guys, if you have any prayer requests, put them in the comments. Uh, we try to respond to each and every one of them, but we will pray for your struggle that you have going on. So guys, I am excited you're here. If you're new, I'm super pumped. We've been doing this a long time. And you need to make sure you're here every single Monday at 7 p.m. And invite your friends. It's Central Standard Time. We're doing Bible study. I'm excited about that specifically because I talked so much about wearing your faith. Because like I said, if you really want to spread that Jesus loves the world, then people are going to look at you. And before, like I said, before they even, before they even hear you, they're going to make a judgment based off of the way you look kind of what it comes down to. LSU guy passes a shirt, a guy uh, wearing an L, uh, LSU shirt guy passes a, um, uh, uh, a guy with an Alabama shirt, you know, on. They're going to hate each other right off the bat. Like, oh, look at that dude. You know, I mean, they, they, I'm not a big, you know, that's just how that kind of stuff goes. But if someone's having a bad day, wouldn't you want to remind them that Jesus loves them just by something you wear? I don't know. Think about it. God bless you guys. Let's pray. God, I thank you for your mercy, your grace, and your love. I thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. Thank you, Lord. I pray you, I pray that each and every one of us would be praying with me, God. I pray you'd strengthen us, God, as forgive us for our sins. Thank you for this great Bible study family, God. Thank you for the Christ-built family we, we are building. Lord, thank you for everything you're doing in our lives. God, I pray your mercy and grace would just continue to surround us. I rebuke you my spirit of infirmity, God. I rebuke you my anybody who's got any migraines, any problems on that end, Lord. And I pray you just continue to walk with us. And I thank you for everything you're doing. I thank you for the incredible day we've had. And just thank you for just all the miraculous stuff that you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys. Don't forget, tag all your friends. Share this video because I say this a million times that you never know what sharing a Bible study will do for somebody else. I cannot tell you how many times I've been praying about something and somebody shared a Bible study and boom, that person was talking about the answer that I needed. It, it just makes sense. So invite your friends to Bible study. Invite your enemies to Bible study. Tag your friends. Um, and I will see you all next Monday, 7 p.m. Um, God bless you guys. See you later.